Hey and welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and I'm a German mechanical engineer based in Sweden. Today I'm gonna answer your questions for my first Q&A. Okay, technically these are my friends questions because I only have 29 subscribers so it's a little bit ridiculous to do a Q&A. <laughs> but let's just roll with it. I sorted these questions into three different categories. First I'll start with some questions about where I live, then some questions about engineering and my career. And finally, some personal questions. Which cities and countries have you lived in? I'm originally from Germany, more specifically a small town near Hamburg. So that's where I grew up and spent the first 16 years of my life. Then I moved to the US for a year where I spent a one year for a high school exchange in upstate New York, Pulaski, which is a really small town close to the Canadian border. Then I moved back to my hometown and from there I moved to Berlin, which is the capital of Germany for my studies. Then I decided to do half a year abroad in France and lived in Lyon in the south of France for half a year, moved back to Berlin and about a year later or so I then moved to Sweden for now two years and counting. <laughs> so initially I was also an exchange student in Sweden, then I did a full one year master here and then I started working and now I well <laughs> and now I fully moved to Sweden. And here in Sweden I also live in the capital which is Stockholm. Why did you move to Sweden over other countries in Europe? It was a little bit of a random decision to be honest. I also considered moving to Poland and Russia instead. So I applied for an exchange here in Stockholm, in Orso and in St. Petersburg. And Sweden was just my first choice because I already had visited here about two or three years before that and really really liked it and so <laughs> I just put that as my first priority and then ended up getting it. So that's the whole reason why I came here in the first place. But then why did I stay? I think since I'm from the north of Germany, I'm already a little bit more suited for the northern culture. So I feel more at home here than I did, for example, in Lyon. Nothing against Lyon or France. I love the country. But when I moved to Stockholm, I had this instant feeling of, oh my God, this is the <laughs> most beautiful city in the world. I absolutely love it here. And that's the first city that I had this feeling in and so that's why I'm now living here and of course it also helped that I then found a job that I really really like that made me want to stay here. What's your favorite Swedish snack? My favorite Swedish snack are hands down chokladbolla which are small chocolate balls that you can find everywhere in a supermarket or in a bakery and they're just the best snack ever. <laughs> and on spot number two I would put licorice which I absolutely love and Sweden has some really really good licorice. What kind of engineer are you and why? So I studied mechanical engineering and the reason I chose that was because it was the largest engineering major. So I just thought if everyone <laughs> likes it, it's gotta be good <laughs> because I had no idea what the differences are between, for example, electrical engineering and mechanical engineering. So I just chose the biggest one and ended up really liking it. And also where I studied, it doesn't matter so much in the beginning which one you choose because they have a lot of overlapping courses. So after a year or so, you could still decide to switch to a different one without losing any time. So that's kind of what my strategy was, but then I really liked the one that I initially picked. And now since I know what electrical engineering is, I am so glad that I did not choose it. That's some next level stuff. And now at my work, my title is Automation Engineer for Material Flow and Robotics. And what that means is that I basically take care of the whole flow of material throughout the factory. So I purchase any equipment that you need to move material between two different process steps like conveyor belts or forklifts or cranes and also that you need to store material in between processes like racks. So basically I moved from mechanical engineering which is a little bit more broad to production engineering or in that kind of field because I really more than making products I like the background of how these products are made. I find that really fascinating and that's why I decided to go more in that direction. Why did you do two master theories instead of one? Would you recommend doing two, one or none at all as a mechanical engineer? I guess the reason this question came up is because I made a video about how I wrote two master theories while working full-time as an engineer and the reason I did that is because next to my engineering studies I also got really interested in business and took a lot of business courses on the side and then I figured out that I could just do a full one year master program and that program was here in Stockholm and I just decided to go for it and so I ended up having to do 
two master theses almost at the same time. And I would definitely not recommend that. Or well, let's say it depends. So the reason I decided to do the full master instead of just the courses is that having the title actually gives me a way to prove the knowledge that I've acquired versus if I just said, well, I took some business courses there, it has less power than saying I have this master's degree in entrepreneurship and innovation management. That's something a little bit more concrete. And it can be quite hard to find a job with just a bachelor because it is quite typical to have a master's degree in engineering more so than in other fields I would say but it also depends on the country a lot so in Germany I would say it's even more important than it is in Sweden because Sweden has a little bit less of a hierarchical culture and so not having a master's degree is not necessarily going to limit how far you can go up in the hierarchy as much as it does in Germany or maybe other more conservative countries and there's also another question I got similar to this and I want to tie into this and that is is it necessary to have a master or PhD in mechanical engineering or is a bachelor with work experience better and to this one I also <laughs> would say it depends it depends on the country a lot like here in Sweden you don't even use your PhD with your name like you do in Germany so your colleagues will not necessarily know that you have a PhD and so it also doesn't really matter that much for hiring or for who you would promote whereas in Germany I think especially in more conservative companies you would hardly see anyone with a PhD working underneath someone without one so I would really think about where you want to work. The closer you want to work to research, the more important a PhD or a master's degree is going to be. Whereas if you're really far on the commercial side, then it's probably not going to be as important. And at my workplace now, for example, I don't think a PhD is valued very much at all, unless you're in the research team where you're going really, really deep on the subject. But if you're like me, a PhD would not bring me any value, I think. It's valued way more to have work experience. And if the question is, should I do just a bachelor or also a master's Master. This, I think, would depend on a few things. So first of all, after your bachelor, do you know what you want to do? Do you feel ready to go work? Because I did not at all. I was so glad that I did a master. There was no way I would have known that I really want to go into production. It just took me a few years to figure out what I really like. So for me, <laughs> that was the only decision possible, I would say. And there were a lot of courses that I would have still liked to take. So it was like, I cannot stop taking courses. And I know other people that feel the same way. But there's also people who are like, like, I absolutely hate university. I just want to get out there and work. And for those people, I think it makes sense to just do a bachelor or consider first working and then later, if you find that it's really limiting you in climbing the ranks, let's say, then you can still go back and do a master's degree. Do you enjoy being away from home for a few days, some weeks on site? Or would you prefer to have a routine at home or in the office all the time? So basically for my work, I have to travel to our factory quite a bit. So that's sometimes every week, sometimes just once per month but I have to travel there regularly and then I would spend between maybe two and four days there and then come back and I have to say I do not enjoy the traveling part at all I really like being on site being there you know it's so much more fun to see your equipment in real life than to just work on it in theory like from far away but I absolutely do not like traveling there and then staying in a hotel being kind of separated from my usual routines I really like having a routine and I am less productive if I don't so that's what I dislike about that but of course it's also really I mean <laughs> it would be really rare to live in a city like Stockholm and then have the factory right <laughs> next to you. So it makes sense that you have to travel for that. But yeah, it has its downsides, let's say. What's your dream job and what career path are you likely going to take to get there? This is a really interesting question because although I already have a job and I really, really like that job, this is not the ultimate goal of where I want to end up. I would actually really like to start my own company, but I also know that I'm not nearly ready for that because I would like to do within engineering and there it just takes a lot of time to really understand the industry and to build your skills to a point where you can do that. So my plan is to learn as much as possible over the next let's say five to ten years and then think about starting something myself. And so to get to that point I'm gonna keep working and also build my business skills on the side. I love reading books about business and now with this channel I'm also learning some new skills that are really relevant I think. So that's the rough plan. If you weren't an engineer 
what would you be doing? So this is a tough question to answer because I really like engineering, but there's a few other jobs that I could imagine myself in. Either I would like to be a university teacher because I really like to teach. I used to want to be an architect, so that's also something I could still see myself doing, even though that's really, really close to engineering, I'd say. So maybe it's a little bit cheating. And the third thing I could see myself doing is being a financial advisor for like personal finance, because I really like talking about money and figuring out how to best manage your money, how to invest and stuff like that. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I went through a lot of weird professions that I wanted to have, like actually weird, like I wanted to be a pirate, but then I also had more serious, kind of serious ideas, like I want to be a ballerina, a firefighter, what else? I used to want to be a journalist and a graphic designer. And then it kind of went to architect, then to civil engineer, and then to just any kind of engineer, and then I picked mechanical engineering. When did you decide to become an engineer? This was about one year before my high school graduation, when I decided that I wanted to go into engineering and I just had a really cool physics professor. I was always interested in math and physics, but also I really liked languages and arts and all kinds of different subjects, so it wasn't really like a natural progression from my favorite subjects. But this physics teacher just really sold it to me in a good way, so I decided to do engineering. What advice or tips would you give young high schoolers that are interested in becoming a mechanic engineer? My first tip for you would be to try and find some engineers to talk to. Maybe there's parents of your friends that are engineers, or you can also ask your teachers to organize something where different professions come into your school and talk about their work life. But then my second tip would be <laughs> to not take this one person that you talk to too seriously because I also spoke to parents who were engineers and they really discouraged me, or like this specific person really discouraged me because I was quite shy. That was absolute bullshit, but you know, don't take it too seriously because someone else is not gonna be able to tell if you fit or not. Only you can do that. And so the third tip is to just go and try it out. Don't think too much about which kind of engineering would fit the best for you, you can just start studying and then figure it out on the way. And finally, the first semesters are probably going to suck because there will be a lot of theory, a lot of math and physics. Don't let this discourage you. Don't judge engineering based on these first few courses because there's more coming later and there's a lot more options opening up to you that you're not able to see in the beginning. So if you're in that situation, then maybe talk to some more experienced students that can tell you where you could maybe go in a few years and give you some motivation to get over this, for most people, really difficult first phase. Who are your favorite YouTubers? This is a super hard question because I like a lot of YouTubers, so I decided to just go for the ones that I really watch every single video when they post. So those have to be Tiffany Ferg and Kelly Stamps. What are your hobbies? How do you spend your free time? Right now, because I just moved apartments last weekend, I spend all of my time furnishing a new apartment, which I really enjoy. Otherwise, I like to go running and sometimes swimming, and I like to read. Right now I'm reading the book Show Your Work by Austin Kleon, which after just the first half has already had a huge impact on me, so go read that if you're looking for something to read next. And of course, most of my free time right now is spent on YouTube, because I probably spend like 10 hours for one video, if you include like writing the script and filming and editing. Not that I've ever stopped the time, but that's, I guess, what I spend on YouTube, so that's what I do in my free time. <laughs> Why did you decide to start a YouTube channel about engineering? I think the main reason was that I never met a woman that was an engineer before, so I thought it's probably the case for other people as well, so maybe I can be that face of engineering, showing you that someone like you can do it. What are your goals for 2022? I should have thought about this, but <laughs> I haven't really formulated my goals yet. I usually do like a longer planning session right at the end of the year because yeah <laughs> I'm cheesy like that. Really like to have some goals for the next year. But what I'm thinking of putting in there is probably that I want to make one YouTube video per week at least. And then there will be some certain skills that I want to learn for engineering. And I want to read more books. And I want to sign up for the Stockholm Marathon and run it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I will probably make a longer video to go more into the goals, so let me know if you want to see that and definitely let me know in the comments below what are your goals for 2022 because I would love to read that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!